Give us your name and what congregation you're from. Good evening. My name is Richard Cunningham. I'm the pastor of the Catalyst Church here in Casa Grande. Great. Thank and you for being here. It's an honor to uh, mayor and chamber members to be here and pray tonight. Let's go to prayer. Father, we just thank you for this uh, time that we can come together, Lord, and not only praise your name, but petition you. Lord, I just pray right now that you would give us the guidance and wisdom that we need tonight to make some decisions. You're the one that can give us the wisdom and the power and the ability. I pray that you would do this tonight. Lord, thank you for this time that we have together. Bless this time together as well. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Donna. All right, uh, the uh, roll call show that everyone is present with uh, Lisa Fitzgibbons, uh, Co Council Member Lisa Fitzgibbons uh, calling in on the phone. Okay. The minutes, Mr. Powell. Okay, glasses out. Mayor McFarland, I move approval of the City Council regular meeting minutes from June 3rd as they're presented and except for the record, the Arts and Humanities Commission minutes from May 7th and the Airport Advisory Board minutes from February 26th. Second. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded to approve the, tonight's minutes. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the minutes have been approved. Claims against the city, May 29 through June 11. Mayor McFarland, I move to accept and pay the claims dated May 29 to June 11, 2019. Second. Second. Nope. We'll give that one to Lisa since she's remote. Good, you can hear me okay. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, good. Better than you like. Yeah, better than you probably want. It's <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's been moved and seconded to approve the claims. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, the claims are approved. Meeting agenda for tonight. Is there any changes from staff? Any? Yeah. Any from uh, council members? Okay. Moved to approve. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve tonight's meeting agenda. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. No special presentations tonight. So we'll move to consent agenda item G. All items listed with an asterisk are considered to be routine matters and will be enacted by one motion and one roll call vote of the council. There'll be no separate discussion of these items unless a council member or member of the public so requests, in which event the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered in its normal sequence of the agenda. Anybody have something you want pulled off the consent agenda? Council members? No. Lisa? No. Okay. All right, then seeing none, then uh, I will call for a roll call vote of the... Oh, motion and uh, second, please. Sorry. I move I'm getting ahead of approval myself. Approval of uh, the items on consent agenda. Consent agenda. Thank you. Second. <laughs> I'm looking at G here. Okay. Now, now I would uh, like to get a roll call vote, please. It's been moved and seconded. Let's Council do Member roll call. Huddleston. Yes. Council Member Fitzgibbons. Yes. Council Member Herman. Yes. Council Member Courtson. Yes. Council Member Powell. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem McBride. Yes. Mayor McFarland. Yes. All right, now this is the time of the evening when we call for public comments, item H. So I will open the floor to anyone from the public who is here tonight that would like to address the council. Just remember that the uh, items that you are discussing are not on our agenda, so we can't have an open discussion, but uh, can take your comments uh, and, and give direction to staff if, if necessary. Is there anyone who would like to call? I do have a card here, so uh, Katie Vazquez, one of our shop local experts. Hi, Katie. <laughs> so? 
obviously you guys know me, but for anyone that doesn't, my name is Katie. And your um, and state your address too, please. My what? Your address. Um, 140 West Flagstone Place. Um, I was hired by AmeriCorps and the city of Casa Grande and Casa Grande Main Street to start a citywide shop local campaign. So every year in the US, um, the first week of July is a time to celebrate not only our independence as a country, but the entrepreneurial spirit and freedom that is embodied in our independent businesses. So Independence Week, they try to recognize the small business owners and everything that they contribute to our communities. So this July, I'm going to be starting, I mean, I'm going to be launching a shop local passport campaign. So it'll start on June 29th and end on Saturday, July 6th. This is kind of, I mean, I like blew it up for size so you can see it. But what it's going to be is you either shop at 10 of the 18 locations or you spend $100. So for every purchase that you make, a sticker will be added to each location and then the amount will be written because it's a good way to track the income. Once you're done with it, you fill out the back and you just put your name, your email address, your phone number, and then you can turn it in at any single one of the locations or the Main Street office or my office. Um, at the end of the week, I will go through and I will collect them all. And then the following week, I'm going to be having an event at the Neon Sign Park where I will be choosing nine winning passports. And they are the prizes that I have so far um, are gift card packages. So every single one of these 18 locations has agreed to give me a gift card for their place. So if you win one, you could get one from like five of them. So you could go back to five of those locations. Um, or I'm gonna have $100 cash. I'm also gonna have a tandem skydive. And then I also have Diamondbacks tickets and I might have something else, but I'm still working on it. So they're gonna be about this size, but it's only a week long and I'm trying to get as many people to participate as possible. So I hope that you join me in celebrating our small businesses. Who are the stores that are listed on there? What? Who are the stores that are listed on your passport? So, so the 18 locations are, I have Deadlift Coffee, Bow Wow Meow, which is, um, it's technically like a thrift store, but all of it benefits the Humane Society. Um, I have Casa Grande Consignment, which is a furniture store, Red Tail Books, Weird Kid Records, um, Casa de Bling, Bay of Island Massage, Cookie Jar, Ellie's Artesian, Jewelry Shop, Good, Ru Good Ruby Christian Bookstore, K&K &K Barber Salon, um, Water and Ice, El Grand Cafe, Cream of the Crop, Adventures in Stained Glass, CGQ, which is the barbecue place, um, International Minute Press, and Big House. So I hope that you will join me in participating. You can pick up the passports from any single one of these businesses. And then once you pick it up, you just hold on to it and then you just continue to go around. And if you go to multiple places, they'll just place a new sticker on top and add your amounts. So if you went to one place, you know, 10 times and spent $100, then that's fine. But I just, wanted to do something that was trackable, I guess, because I know that our small businesses struggle a lot during the summer, and I just hope that this would be a way to help them out. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One question. How are you going to get your forms out? They're, They're available at any single one of the locations. Everywhere that they are. Yeah. They so them. everywhere that they are. And then, like, Main Street will have them. I was hoping that I could leave a few. At City Hall, um, I also was going to ask you guys if I could leave some at the Recreation Center. Sure. Um, just like any of the, you know, city offices, just so they're widely available. And they could also be downloadable online off the Main Street website. Oh, okay. And you could just print them out yourself. Okay. So. Great. Right. Thank you, Katie. Okay, good idea. Yeah, good idea. Is there anyone else from the audience like to speak? Okay, seeing no one rush up to the podium, then uh, I will close the public comments, section H, and we'll move to, uh, looks like item K is the next item on the agenda.
ordinances, resolutions, and other matters. So we'll consider uh, K-1. Mr. Raines? Yes, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, uh, we are at, staff is asking the mayor and council uh, cancel the regular city council meetings of July the 1st and July the 15th, uh, 2019, and schedule special meetings for uh, on July the 8th and July the 22nd. We had uh, a bit of a quorum issue on July the 1, on July 1st, so that meeting actually is, is problematic. And given the fact that we have to have a special meeting for the um, property tax consideration on July 26th, or excuse me, July 22nd, we felt that we would just align that uh, and move both meetings for the month. Okay. Does the council have any questions? Lisa, any questions? No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Then uh, I will uh, consider someone. Is it just a, is it a I motion? I think it's just a motion, right? A motion. Yeah, a motion to uh, accept. I'm, I move that we cancel the regular city council meetings of July 1st and 15th and reschedule those meetings as special meetings on July 8th and July 22nd, 2019. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So note the changes in the dates. Item K then, we'll move to uh, consider resolution 5183. Mayor and members of council, staff recommends that the city council approve a resolution adopting, adopting the fiscal year 20 tentative budget in the amount of $179,383,194 and set the public hearing and final adoption dates for the budget and the tax levy. If the council adopts the tentative budget, just a reminder that it does set the maximum expenditure limitation for fiscal year 20. Um, I did not prepare a separate presentation um, for the council, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions from the council members? No. Mr. Powell? <clears throat> just so people know, this, this is an approved amount. We can't exceed, but... but if people come and we need to reduce something, it can be reduced but not not added to. That's correct. Okay. During the public hearing. And the, and the meeting will be what, the 8th? Yes. Okay. So it will be July 8th. That will be a public hearing too, right, Larry? Yes. yes. Okay. Lisa, did you have any questions or comments? Uh, um, just a comment. I just wanted to, as, as we discussed the study session, you know, since the suspension of the recycle program is, Included <clears throat> with the adoption of this budget, you know, um, I just still have some concerns with um, moving forward. Um, I don't have any problems with the budget itself, but um, as, as far as suspending the recycle program immediately, I just, I again, I'm, I want to make it clear that I'm not opposed to suspending, or and I'm not saying that we need to increase rates, but I just feel that we don't have. Um, enough information to make to make that decision. So, you know, I, you know, of course, would prefer to, you know, um, mm -hmm. to, you know, just wait, a, you know, a month or so and get some more information before we actually suspend. Because I think it's going to be difficult once we suspend to move forward on any other options. So, just wanted to make sure that I that I did understand clearly that if, um, this budget is tied to the suspension of the recycling program. So if you can just clarify that one more time for me. Yes, Mr. Mayor, members of the council and, and Councilwoman Fitzgibbons, the suspension of the program is included in the fiscal year 20 budget. Um, however, staff has given ourselves budget authority through the expenditure, uh, expenditure side of the equation uh, to bring back a, any type of solution for recycling in the future that may require the mayor and council to consider a rate increase at that time as we have during this budget process uh, for the current program but uh, but ultimately uh, it is included in the fiscal year budget uh, as, as part of the uh, the suspension of the program um, and would answer any additional questions that the council may have does that answer your question Lisa yes it does Bob yeah. Uh, this topic was covered quite heavily during the uh, study session and I did not uh, comment on it but I, I, 
I've thought about it and I feel like maybe I, I need to. Um, the, the recycling program suspension is tied to, to this budget and I, I feel it's, uh, it's the responsible thing to do to suspend that program. I know what, uh, what the concerns are and I've listened to those. I don't feel that, that it uh, is going to be that difficult to reinstate if and when we find a, a program. But I, for one, went out this morning and took, took my recycles to the, to the sidewalk and I felt weird about it because <laughs> I knew where it was going. I mean, we, yeah. I was paying to have our city pick up these items, take them to the landfill, bail them up, and in all likelihood of what we know right now, they'll eventually end up in the landfill. And so uh, maybe that's uh, just a nuts and bolts view of it. And, uh, um, but, but I do feel as fiscal managers uh, of the city, I, I think it's our obligation and our duty uh, to approve this and suspend that program with the emphasis on suspend. Um, there's not a one of us up here that, that does not want to recycle. Um, but, uh, but as stewards of, uh, of the city funds, I, I feel it's our obligation to, to bite the bullet, suspend it, and then, like everybody has said, I agree with all of you, keep looking and try to come up with an option where we can uh, reactivate that program. And that, that's all I had to say. Mary? I want to say that I, I agree with mo most of what you said, uh, Council Member Huddleston, and that. And I'm, I'm optimistic. I'm going to remain <coughs> optimistic. I, I do believe that I like the, to continue to use suspension. Uh, and my only concern is, is that just by suspending that we continue to look. Uh, I think we have enough um, people in our community and in our, our city staff in that that do uh, believe in this program and I have confidence and hope that it's not going to take a back seat to something else. Okay. Anybody else? Mayor, if I may. Sure, um, go ahead, Lisa. You know, and I, I agree with you, Council Member of course, and I am very optimistic. I, I really do feel that we can come up with a solution that will be good for, for everyone. And I know there are many communities that are still working on this and um, you know, are facing the same challenges. So I do think that those cities are going to really come together and come up with a solution. So, you know, just, you know, I, you know, again, I, 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 I just really think that it could make a difference. Um, and I, I am optimistic. I really am. And I, you know, understand the dollars and cents that are involved. But if we can continue, you know, for the next 30 days, 60 days, whatever it takes to, to really come up with a solution. We've educated people for so long. All of our kids have gone through this for years and years and years. And, you know, to, to tell them now that it's not, you know, important and um, not good for the environment, you know, it, and so I think that, you know, we need some, some more edu education on, you know, what, you know, the, the other cities are doing, um, you know, the, the experts coming in telling us, and then hopefully it will be an emergency situation where we can come up with something. So that's my only thing. Again, I don't, I don't, I'm not saying that we should you know, not suspend or not raise. I, I, I truly believe that, you know, it, uh, 30 days could give us more information, so. Mr. Powell. Larry, you said earlier, I think, that if we had a chance or an opportunity that was discovered that we could address this, you could get that done. That is correct, yes. So basically what we're saying right here is we're setting the absolute highest uh, figure we are on the on the budget and in in the last ones in August that we talk do we approve it finally uh, the the budget itself the final budget and uh, Selena correct me if I'm wrong is July the 8th okay. the the meeting that you're referring to Councilmember Powell in August is the reading of the property tax it's okay. the second okay. reading of the property tax. okay well uh, just speaking to what Lisa wants I know that that uh, I agree with with uh, uh, Councilman Huddleston very definitely. I think that's that, that uh, we don't have the ability to recycle. We don't right now, and to charge extra money for something that we're unable to do, I think, is not fair to the public. I think that Larry is saying that if something comes up, 
Lisa, if you keep doing research or find somebody or some way to do it, and as Bob said, I think everybody up here would love to keep the recycling going. <coughs> but uh, if, if something comes up, then I think Larry could get that uh, put back in place again and, and we could go right on. Yeah, and, and for my part, I'm just going to change how I recycle. I'm going to go recycle myself, mm -hmm. but I'm going to have to limit it to cardboard and aluminum uh, and number one plastic because there is a place here in town that will take number one plastic. So you're just going to have to kind of find a way to do it in your own way. And so, I mean, because I, I believe in recycling, so I'm going to try and continue to do it. Just going to have to do it a different way until we figure out a solution. So, all right, that being said, then I will entertain a resolution number, please, Gloria. Resolution number 5183, a resolution of the Council of the City of Casa Grande, Arizona, adopting the tentative estimates of the amount required for the public expenses for the City of Casa Grande for fiscal year 2019-2020, adopting a tentative budget setting forth the receipts and expenditures, the amounts actually levied, the amounts estimated as collectible for the previous fiscal year, and the amounts proposed to be raised by direct property taxation for the various purposes, and given notice of the time for hearing taxpayers for adopting a budget and for fixing the tax levies. Mayor McFarland, I move for approval of resolution number 5183 as presented. Second. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Gloria, can I get a roll call vote, please? Council Member Huddleston. Yes. Council Member Fitzgibbons. Um, I'm going to vote no. And again, as I stated, because it's tied to the suspension of the recycling at this time, I'm going to vote no. Okay. Uh, Council Member Herman. Yes. Council Member Courtson. Yes. Council Member Powell. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem McBride. Yes. Mayor McFarland. Yes. Okay. Next item on our agenda is L1, public hearing consideration of resolution number 5184, planning and development. Oh, hi. Hello. Mary <laughs> Allen. <laughs> Staff recommends the approval of the proposed program year 2019 CDBG annual action plan, or in other words, the annual funding plan. The Office of Housing and Urban Development announced that the annual community development block grant entitlement allocation for the City of Castle Grand will be $415,071 for program year 19. In preparation of the 2019 annual action plan, a public hearing was held on June, January 30th, 2019 at the Mondo Anayo Community Center at Seeds of Hope. The majority of the comments received during the public hearing were generally focused on the needs of the homeless population in the city, services for the seniors, and services for victims of abuse and violence, and employment opportunities for the disabled population. Public infrastructure and facility improvements along with affordable housing are among the highest priorities of the city. The application process was reviewed and solicitation was opened for applications. So the funding committee is recommending that planning and administration for $83,014.20, affordable housing programs, $50,000 for the owner-occupied housing rehabilitation program with the city of Cascran, $66,700 for a new code enforcement officer to address slum and blight issues in the low to moderate areas in the city, again, the city of Cascran, um, public facilities and infrastructure improvements $104,451.80 for the Cottonwood Garden Streetlight Project and $60,000 for Elliott Park Playground Shade Ramada and Parking Lot Project. Public Services Programs, $15,000 for CARA, Community Action Human Resource Agency, to fund Cash Grand Homeless Services, $15,905 for the Seeds of Hope to continue their Senior Connections Program, 15000 for Against Abuse to fund advocacy service for victims of abuse and violence, and $5,000 for the city's police department to fund crime prevention and education outreach to the Southside neighborhood. The annual action plan was created based on the funding recommendations and public comments. The annual action plan was posted and available for review for 30 days, May 8th through June 7th. I received one comment asking about the neighborhood revitalization map in relationship to a project. We're asking for approval of the annual action plan. Mm -hmm. you want to make a comment? Yeah. 
Anybody have any questions or comments? The, I think it's the, great. Li the list was on the details of right. that. Right. I, I do have to say, though, too, as uh, prior years, it wasn't quite as varied, and I like the variety that we're hitting all different segments of our community uh, and that, so I appreciate that. I think, I think that was guidance from the Fed, Feds that we kind of stick to a, a plan the first few years that we had the yeah. money. And now once we've been in this plan for a while now, I think we've been able to expand it a little bit more. So it's been, yeah. that's been good. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you, Mary. Mm -hmm. Lisa, any comments? Yeah, no, just the same thing. I, I, I've noticed the same, Mary, that it's just having that diverse, you know, different services is, is great. I mean, it covers seniors, homeless, you know, even the code enforcement officer, that's yeah. so critical in, in the planning department. So um, I'm just happy to see the different programs that are going to be funded. Okay. Anybody else? I just would agree with her about the code enforcement officer. Yeah. Lisa. <laughs> okay. Well, this is a public hearing, so uh, I'm going to open the floor to the public. Anybody wishing to speak on on the um, consideration of our community development block grant entitlement programs? If you would like to step forward, please do so at this time. All right, seeing no one rush to the podium again, I will then close the hearing and call for a resolution number, please. Gloria? Resolution number 5184, a resolution of the mayor and council of the city of Casa Grande, Arizona, adopting the community development block entitlement FY 2019 annual action plan. Mayor McFarland, I move for the adoption of resolution number 5184 as presented. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Can I get a roll call vote, please, Gloria? Councilmember Huddleston. Yes. Councilmember Fitzgibbons. Yes. Councilmember Herman. Yes. Councilmember Quartzen. Yes. Councilmember Powell. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem McBride. Yes. Mayor McFarland. Yes. All right, last item on our agenda tonight is reports. And Lisa, since you've been hanging on the phone, I'm going to let you go first. All right, okay. And then, um, you, and then you can hang up if you want. No, hang totally up if you want. Just got stand. We have come. Just oh. things happen, and I know Larry has been working on this, but the, the internship program, I saw in your report that there were 60 applicants, and it was just exciting to see. So I'm really looking forward to hearing more about the program and how it's going to Thank you, Lisa. Mm -hmm. um, I'll go over to Mary, please. 
Um, just a couple of things. I actually had a conversation with, and I don't know if I can pronounce his name correctly, Dubowski, Dubowski. Uh, and he's uh, doing the Green Revolution as far as doing a community garden and trying to put an LLC nonprofit together. Uh, we have different community garden efforts here, a lot of backyard uh, efforts. There's a special gardening group with CG Chat. All of this can kind of go into the idea of sustainability that we have. It's my hope that one of these days uh, that we could have a city co a compost pile that citizens could go out and contribute to the pile and then also be able to take and take to their gardens. The most uh, exciting part I like about this is the idea that they're looking at a piece of city owned land south of uh, the tracks. And I think this is going to be a good addition to helping that side uh, redevelop itself uh, and any of the efforts that we make to clean up the lots and that, that uh, that, that would be a, a, something that would really be positive down there. Uh, also, uh, oh, and it's called Isa's Garden LLC. The other thing, too, is it's just, you know, it, it breaks our heart as far as doing the recycling that I don't know what the answer is. I'm again. I'm optimistic. I do believe there's going to be. There's just too many people that really <coughs> want this to happen. But in the meantime, let's all be more cognizant of what it is. You know, instead of using buying that big, 48 bottle of plastic bottles, you know, reuse your have a reusable cup. Go buy something that's really fun and cool and and refill it. Uh, buy a, you know, a five-gallon bottle of water instead and refill from it. I'd like to see the city get rid of the styrofoam cups and we can use paper cups. I mean, I don't know whatever happened with paper. At least they're, com you know, compostable and that um, as far as, you know, let's take our shopping bags, our own shopping bags to the grocery store. I do it all the time. I see people doing it all the time, and I, I go, they're easier to carry than a plastic bag, and even my husband's gotten to where he agrees that they are easier to use, and you can save just so much from those darn plastic bags. So I would just ask that folks take a look, even though we may not be picking up that, let's see if we can still reduce our use and reuse what we have. Okay. Donna? Uh, just piggybacking on what um, was said earlier, Lisa, the resource roundup, and I think it's year 15. And, um, you know, it sounds like just another um, local conference, but they really have 250, 300 people every year. And it was really exciting to see so many resources that, um, that we have in our community. And so it was a really good event, and, and they did a great job. And I think highlighting what we've done with the Homelessness Task Force and for Lisa to give an update, it was really interesting. So um, I also attended the breakfast that the Chamber of Commerce had for the council. That was interesting just to, to see the new director and see what's going on. And then um, I also attended Coffee with a Cop that was downtown. And as always, the police department does a great job with that. And that's about it. Okay. Mr. Powell? Lisa, are you still on the line? I, yes, I am. I just wanted to let you know that I know it's unusual, but being in California, you're by far the farthest to the right of anybody on council right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, would just, I would just add, I've, I think most of you know I've been working on an idea of transporting water from the flood areas out to the and I did get to go up to uh, Kristen Cinema's office and, and talk to her uh, water guy. We had a really good visit. And then on, um, in July, the, uh, the National Conservation, uh, Natural Resources Conservation meets in Flagstaff, and it's on the agenda up there. So uh, little by little, the word's getting out. Matt? Thank you. That was the uh, city website, by the way, that came up on my new computer. So <laughs> it really was. I sure hope. Um, uh -huh. Sure, Matt. It was. Never heard us say that. Uh, but we had a, a youth commission web uh, meeting at the rec center because this 
this office or this room was full and so it was great to have the youth commissioners there and they got to take a tour and everything and they were all very impressed and we will be seating a new youth commission next month so keep your eye out for that and thanks to uh, Ms. Vasquez for bringing the shop local and the independent week for independence week so thank you it's always important as you saw from our budget presentation tonight our our local sales tax is always the, one of the the biggest contributor to our general fund budget so very important that we shop in town and what are the dates yeah. you know uh, the, the 20 you have to say it a little louder though june 29th to july 6th thank you and then there will be an event following at the neon sign yes. park on July 12th. On July 12th. So, and that's where the drawings will be held. That's where the drawings will be held for. That's where the drawings will be held. Thank you. And I'm getting assigned to stop <laughs> my attorney. Bob, you're uh, crossing the line. <laughs> Mayor, the only thing I was going to report on was the passing of uh, Rudy Salazar. And uh, I, I would act. I would add to that the the passion that doesn't quite sum it up for him. Mm -hmm. uh, he uh, he had called me to his house a few times and uh, talked about <laughs> different issues. And uh, man, I, I I never knew if I was getting his support or if he was dressing me down. You know, but uh, <laughs> but but he he was always very passionate about it. And uh, and I, I want to. Uh, not only condolences but thank you uh, to the family for his service uh, not only to the city council but but also to our country I know he was a veteran uh, as well uh, so anyway well done Rudy and uh, and we'll miss you thank you okay thanks Bob I don't have a whole lot but I did want to mention a couple things first of all we received a letter uh, from the government finance offices officers association and again for I don't know, how many years now Larry 29 30 somewhere something there. like 29 30 years with a, they are pleased to notify the city of Casa Grande Arizona that that we received the distinguished budget presentation award so congratulations to our finance department and to you Larry for your your leadership there so thank you very much that's a that's a big deal whether anybody knows that or not um, yeah um, also want to recognize one of our own I think I know she was in the paper over this but I, I thought it was it was good to maybe at least have a, a second um, bring up on it but Donna McBride was uh, was um, recognized as the 2019 alumni award for the civic impact from the project central group so Donna congratulations Served. Yes, definitely. I'm, I'm clapping too, Donna. <laughs> <laughs> and just to kind of recap of some of the, the, the major uh, events that I've attended the last week or so, um, I actually was asked to speak at the Lambda Alpha uh, International Land Economic Society of uh, the Phoenix chapter last week. It was uh, uh, quite an honor to, to speak to a bunch of Phoenicians about Casa Grande and to kind of fill them in on on what we're what we've got going on down here they were interested very interested uh, and uh, uh and the presentation was was well received and uh thanks to our pio wherever he went He's for, for helping put that together um today we had the league legislative road show it was rather interesting as a total recap of all the legislative actions that have taken uh place this year the league of cities and towns uh, does this annually where they they'll go around and then they give the city's guidance on some of the new legislature and what we need to do because some of these things require charter changes for some cities uh, unfortunately none of the, none of the changes affected our charter this year but there are uh, several cities that have to gonna have to now go to a vote with their citizens to get the charter changed so they're in compliance with state law thank you legislature yeah. it would be I, interesting if they don't vote for it and I'll it would be yeah Real um, and I'll leave it at that. Also, I want to shout out to Alan Friedman and his wife for the flyers, the RC flyers. They do a great job. If you've never been to their any of their 
uh, events. They, they're out there by our shooting range. They're cro literally across the street, and they have a, a runway there. They're so organized. Uh, they have a weather station there. I mean, you can actually plug into their weather station if you want to get the weather right up by CG Mountain. It's absolutely incredible what they've done to this little piece of dirt that we've let them use. So, you have yeah, super organized, just, just great people. Um, we also had some boards and commission interviews tonight, so we made some decisions on a, on a parks and rec board, which we'll have at the next city council meeting. And then, uh, let's see, what else? Pinal Partnership Breakfast this, this uh, Friday is at 7.30 in our rec center. Sold out. I think it's sold out, though, sold so out. if you want to go, find somebody who's going and take their seat. <laughs> um, but it starts at 7.30, and it's a breakfast basically with the mayors. Uh, I think we're going to have four, four of us there, four or five, yeah. So it could be an interesting conversation. <coughs> and... That's all I have. Anybody else have anything you want to add? No, sir. Nope. Okay, thank you, Lisa. Thank you, everybody. Some of the Kanky Council. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Bye, Lisa. Uh, Meeting adjourned. I have to go now.